A young boy runs towards his classroom wondering if the girl he has a crush on is alone inside the classroom. Reluctantly, he opens the classroom door and retrieves a confession letter from his bag. To his surprise, as soon as he opens the door, he sees Yako Shiragami reassured by the sight. However, he finds something shocking that causes them both to scream. Earlier, Kiramine Asahi is playing cards with his fashionable glasses on, squaring that no one can read him. Ironically, his face is very readable, as pointed out by his friends playing with him. One of his friends confesses feeling uneasy playing the game Old Maid with Asahi due to his readable expressions. This leads to the nickname Leaky Basket, stemming from Asahi's inability to lie or keep secrets. Asahi asks his pals to trust him more, but they reassure him that they believe him rather than just trusting him. His friends, Oka, Shimada, and Sakurada console him, saying that being unable to keep secrets isn't necessarily a bad thing. As class begins, Asahi thinks to himself about the lovely girl he likes, Shuragami Yako. She always appears mysterious and spends breaks alone, arriving at school before everyone else and leaving later. Yako catches Asahi looking at her, making him realize he must keep his feelings for her a secret. He notices that Yako avoids the sun during PE and assumes she has sensitive skin, though he's seen her to be quite tan before. Lost in thought, he's unexpectedly hit in the face by a football. After school, Asai's friends ask when he plans to confess to Yako. Nervously, he questions how they found out about his feelings. They point out his constant gaze at her and reveal they've known since fall. This surprises him and he apologizes for not telling them earlier. While Shimada and Sakurada reassure him, Oka reminds Asahi of last year, when the class rep mocked his feelings for herself before he even confessed. They then urge him to confess to Yako without any fear of rejection. Later, Asagi heads to confess while Oka hints that Yako might reciprocate his feelings. He rushes to the classroom with the letter, only to find Yako with her wings out. Their mutual shock results in them both screaming out. Yako then questions if Asagi saw her wings, but he denies it. Meanwhile, Asai's friends encounter the journalism club president, Aikmi Mikan, seeking a story involving Asahi, but they dodge her questions and run away. The scene shifts back to the classroom, and Yako confesses to Asahi that she's a vampire, explaining her aversion to chatting with other girls due to her tendency to show her fangs while talking. Asahi realizes Yako doesn't know his feelings and discovers she's just dense. Yako expresses her relief in confiding in Asahi, mentioning she was planning to leave the school after he found out her secret. Asahi convinces Yako to stay, promising to keep her secret. He then asks her to be his friend, and with teary eyes, she happily agrees. Asahi is elated that he can walk home with his crush, given they live near the same station. He confesses to Yako that he feels uneasy keeping her secret, but Yako reassures him, advising him not to stress over it. The following day, his friends inquire about his confession to Yako, to which he responds that they become friends. On the other hand, Azawa Najisa, the class representative, reflects on her feelings with thoughts drifting to the past summer when she rejected Asahi, only to notice him veering toward a new path, a crush on Yako. She's puzzled by her feelings, wondering if she might have misunderstood Asahi's emotions. Later, Izawa confronts Asahi, demanding to know what truly happened last summer. She asked if he genuinely liked her in the past, which Asahi confirms, leaving her flustered and relieved. Bystanders, including Asahi's friends, speculate about her intentions, but she clarifies that she wouldn't pursue a guy who swiftly shifts his focus after being rejected. After class, Yako is seen having lunch in an empty classroom. Asahi questions her about not eating during lunch breaks, and she explains that she fears exposing her fangs. He asks why she doesn't consume blood instead of regular food and so, she reveals that bloodsucking is a gesture of love, not a simple meal. Feeling hungry, Yako starts looking around for food which leads to her stumbling upon some cream puffs. Despite Asahi saying that they're not his, she tries one and finds it oddly spicy causing her to writhe in pain, while Asahi prepares to bring her water. However, he's interrupted by the class rep, Izawa, who discovers Yako's secret. Izawa demands answers, questioning Yako's origin. In a surprising turn, a tiny Izawa figure emerges from her head and reveals herself as an alien, an external unit conducting an undercover investigation on Earth. She contemplates erasing their memories, but Asahi runs away. She then chases after him, revealing that a strong impact item like a hammer could erase his memories. She discloses her fear of being court-martialed if her identity of an alien spreads and even offers to erase Yako's secret from Asahi's memory. Asahi agrees to the memory wipe, but Yako steps in and stating she's fine with Asahi knowing her secret, prompting Izawa to leave. The next day arrives, and the president of the journalism club is relentless in her pursuit of answers regarding the previous day's events. She corners Asahi's friends, demanding explanations. They firmly assured her that nothing out of the ordinary had occurred. Meanwhile, as this questioning unfolds, Asahi himself is making his way towards them. 
The journalist president seizes the opportunity and questions Asahi about his relationship with Yako. In response, Asahi is taken aback, but before he can formulate a response, the president pulls out a recorder, which contains a fragment of the conversation between Yako and Asahi. This revelation prompts Asahi to bolt, and the journalist president gives chase, ardently pursuing him for an interview. Asahi's reasons for fleeing become apparent when he finally slows down. He candidly reveals his discomfort with how she has publicized personal details about him in the past. From childhood bedwitting to middle school crush confessions. The story takes a curious turn as Mikan captures Asahi, securing him with a water pipe. She applies pressure by activating the pipe to create a urinating illusion. Armed with a camera, she coerces Asahi to spill the beans or risk exposure of these embarrassing images. With no way out, Asahi admits to his platonic relationship with Yako. Unsatisfied, Mikan embarks on a mission to probe further. Asahi's attention shifts to Yako's absence from school the following day. Concerned, he learns from the teacher that she's merely suffering from a cold. Puzzled by her absence, Asahi is asked to deliver some papers to her house. Meanwhile, Mikan's eavesdropping nature doesn't miss this detail. After class, she tracks Asahi down, leading him into an encounter with Aizawa. Faced with Mikan's relentless pursuit, Aizawa encourages Asahi to run errands for Yako, while she diverts Mikan's attention. Later, Asahi arrives at Yako's residence, noticing bats around her abode. Inside, their conversation navigates peculiar topics, including vampires and coffins. Amidst their exchange, a call from Izawa alerts him to Mikan's imminent arrival at Yako's home. Yet, Mikan's search yields no fruitful information. The next day, Mikan grumbles about her lack of findings. Resorting to a fabricated story, she crafts a headline claiming that Asahi had spent the night at a mysterious girl's lavish house. Before this piece of fiction could spread throughout the school, Asahi rips the article from the bulletin board and confronts Mikan on the rooftop. Desperate to prevent the spread of this baseless rumor, Asahi implores Mikan not to publish the article. His fear stems from the realization that Yako, now under scrutiny, might have to leave due to the unwanted attention. Asahi realizes Mikan's relentless pursuit is due to his resistance. To counter this, he lets her publish the photos, claiming he's fine with it. Surprisingly, Mikan refuses, thwarted by his unexpected agreement. Mikan's annoyance takes a surprising turn when her glasses start talking. God of Fortune has inhabited them due to her care, however, Mikan finds the situation amusing as she converses with her talking glasses. Class is in full swing, and the teacher becomes curious about Izawa's whereabouts after the lunch break. The class continues while Asahi observes something odd. The class representative has shrunken to a miniature size. Signaling him, she conveys her desire to step outside the classroom. Asahi makes a bathroom excuse to the teacher, but she denies his request, urging him to wait a bit longer. Eventually, he's granted permission and joins miniature Aizawa outside. She explains her need to recharge her external unit's depleted battery, which powers her human-sized form. Meanwhile, Asahi and Yako realize how they had distracted her earlier, delaying her charging. Asahi then inquires about her larger form, learning it's in the ladies' restroom. Aizawa's request prompts Asahi to enter the girl's bathroom. Reassured by Aizawa that her external unit is in a stall, he picks her up and makes his way. The school bell rings and Aizawa urges him to hurry. On his way, he bumps into Yako, who helps them reach the nurse's office safely. Grateful, she thanks both Yako and Asahi. As Aizawa prepares an escape route, she encounters Mikan. To prevent Mikan from discovering her alien identity, Asahi employs a diversion. He pretends the miniature Aizawa is a figure, inciting Mikan's curiosity. Yako and Asahi reassure her that it's just her imagination. Worried that Mikan might uncover Izawa's secret, Asahi swiftly changes the topic, asking Mikan about the school's mysteries. Mikan mentions stories of an ephemeral horned lady, the pervert of light, and even a vampire. Yako is taken aback by the revelations. Mikan is about to lift Izawa's skirt and a bid to avert the situation. Asahi feigns interest in the figure, claiming he made it and demands its return. Mikan misunderstands his intentions and hands Izawa to him. Aizawa appreciates Asahi's efforts to save her from embarrassment. Asagi takes refuge in a storage room, and Aizawa suddenly returns to her normal human size, with a lingering antenna on her head. Just as they are about to locate Asahi, Aizawa punches him, claiming she had beat him up because of the figurine he had made on her. Heading back to school, she returns back to her miniature form. Later, Aizawa reflects on the day's events and realizes she's developed feelings for Asahi, leaving her with a newfound emotional complexity. On a rainy morning before school, Asahi and Yako paths unexpectedly cross. The weather, previously a promise of rain, has abruptly cleared, causing Yako's fair skin to tan easily. Feeling misled by the weather forecast, Yako and Asahi encounter Aizawa, who finds it hard to believe that a simple walk to school under the sun could result in such a drastic tan. 
In a curious turn of events, Izawa decides to teach Yako the art of survival. Their training begins on the school's outdoor grounds. Izawa takes on the role of mentor, aiming to teach Yako how to navigate the challenges of sunlight. The first lesson is evading enemy bullets, symbolized by the sun's rays. Izawa instructs Yako to dart from one patch of shade to another, training her to avoid direct sunlight. However, the lesson proves to be harder than anticipated, leaving Yako scorched by the end of it. Asahi reflects on vampires and their weaknesses, realizing the difficulties that Yako must confront daily. While walking, Asahi encounters Yako again, this time in the company of Izawa. To his surprise, Yako's complexion has reverted to its pale state. Yako demonstrates her newfound prowess in evading the sun by deftly maneuvering through shadows. As they navigate, they come across an unexpected obstacle, a garlic food stall. Concerned for Yako's well-being, Asahi hastily consumes the garlic being sold. Right after overcoming this hurdle, their attention is caught by a cross sign, which legend claims can defeat vampires. Quick on his feet, Asagi purchases a cross pendant and tosses it out of Yako's sight to safeguard her. Following this incident, Ezawa and Yako hold their breaths, as Asai's garlic breath proves less than appealing. Yako then reveals that garlic and the cross don't bother her much as a vampire. As they progress, they encounter a sunlit street devoid of shade. Ezawa and Asagi put their heads together to protect Yako from the harsh UV rays. The idea of sunblock is raised, with Asagi suggesting its use. The following day, to everyone's surprise, Yako walks in the sunlight without tanning. It turns out she had tried sunblock for the first time, and it worked. Yako extends an invitation to Asahi and Aizawa to an amusement park, with hopes of bringing them closer as she suspects they share a secret crush on each other. Though Aizawa is unable to join, Yako and Asahi embark on the adventure. They indulge in rides, and Yako's enthusiasm for thrill rides becomes evident. Amidst their conversations, Yako reveals a surprising truth. She's half human and half vampire. Her mother was human, and she met her vampire father during their time at the high school they were attending. Yako also shares intriguing details about other supernatural beings like wolf men and how vampires, like her, are akin to childhood friends. After their day at the amusement park comes to an end, Yako expresses her gratitude to Asahi for spending the day with her. Asahi's curiosity is piqued by Yako's mention of a childhood friend. On their way back, they unexpectedly encounter a tough-looking guy who claims to know Yako. His jagged teeth make Asahi speculate if this could be the wolfman Yako had mentioned. Yako questions the man named Shiru about his presence and before he can explain, he turns to Asahi asking what he is doing with Yako. In a tense moment after finding out that they went to the amusement park together, Shiru tearfully asks Asahi to make Yako happy in her life. Asahi interrupts and clarifies the situation, debunking the misunderstanding. Both Yako and Asahi reassure Shiru that their relationship is purely that of friends. Shiro apologizes for his earlier behavior. He then reveals the reason for his abrupt appearance. Yako's father had asked him for a favor. If anyone discovered Yako's vampire secret, she was to return home immediately and quit school. Shiro suspects Asahi might be aware of Yako's secret and confronts him about it. Asahi, feeling pressured, grabs Shiro's collar to appear intimidating and denies any knowledge of the secret. Angered, Shiro questions why Asahi didn't find his sharp teeth strange. Asagi nonchalantly claims he thought it was a fashion trend, which infuriates Shiro who vents his frustration at Asagi for undermining his wolf-like appearance. Desperate to defuse the situation, Asagi panics internally. He realizes that if things escalate further, Shiro might actually transform into a wolf. However, Shiro's attention shifts to the moon, causing an unexpected twist. Shiro, who was initially perceived as a tough guy, transforms into Shishido Shiho, a girl. The scene shifts to Izawa, preoccupied with thoughts about Yako and her day at the amusement park. She conjures scenarios in her mind about what could have transpired between Yako and Asahi. Yako, Asahi, and the newly transformed Shishido head to Yako's house, where she introduces Shishido as her childhood friend. Shishido playfully flirts with Asahi, leading to awkwardness. Asahi changes the topic and inquires about Shishido's awareness of her wolfman identity. Shishido explains the complex dynamic. She's aware of her identity while in her female form, but Shiru, her male identity, remains unaware while she is in control. Shishido expresses her surprise at Asai's boldness towards her male form. To avoid further complications, Yako shows Shishido a picture of the moon, causing a transformation back into a male. In a parallel development, Ezawa's musings lead her to Yako's place through various misunderstandings involving Shiru and Shishido. Eventually, Things calm down and Shishido departs from Yako's home. The following day at school, Asadi clears up the misunderstandings with Aizawa regarding the events of the previous day. The next day, a new transfer student joins the class who turns out to be none other than Shishido. Asahi and Yako, 
while walking through the school corridor spots something unusual, a girl with horns passing by. Intrigued, they follow her, with Asagi speculating if she might be a demon or something while Yako adds that the girl is quite cute. They continue trailing her and baseball accidentally lands on her horns. She calmly returns it to its owner, leaving Asahi in awe. Yako approaches the girl and asks to pet her horns. The girl introduces herself as Komodo Akane. Asagi notices that her surname is the same as their teacher's, so he inquires if there's a relation and Akane confirms that she's related to their teacher but doesn't tell them in what way. She casually mentions that her horns are just a fashion accessory before excusing herself. Later, Akane encounters her relative, Komodo Akari, the teacher. Akari warns Akane not to mess with her students and holds her up by her horns. Akane pleads, fearing her horns might fall off. Overhearing their conversation, Asahi and Yako are shocked to hear Akari call Akane a demon and express her dislike for the way her great-great-grandmother dressed. The scene shifts to an office where Akane reveals to Yako and Asahi that she's an ancient demon who has lived for millennia, and to add to that she's also the school's principal. With confidence, she questions if Asahi and Yako are too awestruck to speak. Aizawa, in her alien external unit, receives a threat notification and springs into action. Realizing the threat is from within the school, she activates her spaceship. Asagi notices that Akane is aware of Yako's vampire identity, but Yako seems to have a grip on the situation. Asagi asks Akari if she knew, and she admits to knowing since she had to fill out forms. Before Akane can unleash her anger, Akari reminds her that damages will be deducted from her paycheck, causing Akane to calm down. However, a strange rivalry seems to spark between Akane and Yako. They decide to compete to prove who's more mature and adult-like, with Asagi reluctantly acting as the judge. As the competition unfolds, it becomes annoying for Asagi since it's unclear who's winning. The final challenge involves eating spicy cream puffs, with the victor being the one who handles the heat better, but it seems to end in failure. Another day at school, Asagi finds himself in supplemental classes due to a missed day from being sick. He's joined by Izawa Shishido and Yako in the cooking class. However, something about this group lineup seems off to him. A teacher announces that they'll be making curry intended for the teachers to eat. Asahi notices the teacher's peculiar approach to the lesson. She asks him whether salt or sugar is sweeter and when he answers sugar, she pats him on the back and hurries away. Shishida reveals Yako's cooking tendencies, noting that she's good unless she tries too hard or panics. Aizawa takes charge and starts chopping ingredients into bite-sized pieces. She attempts to melt the roux with hot water but accidentally makes a chocolate cake instead. Akane, the demon principal, happens to catch the cake as Aizawa tosses it out the window and surprisingly finds it delicious, overhearing it's Aizawa's creation. Apologizing for her curry mishap, Aizawa is reassured by Yako that they can try again. The gang decides to create the curry without a recipe and with teamwork. They manage to produce the dish. But then, Yako and Aizawa decide to elevate the challenge beyond curry, leaving Asahi and Shishido worried about the outcome. Meanwhile, Mikan is seen with Akane in the schoolyard, seemingly providing her with food. Mikan appears interested in breaking news and hovers around Akane. While Mikan is distracted, Akane goes her own way. Akari intervenes, reminding Akane not to meddle with the students. Later, Akane's craving for the otherworldly chocolate cake spirals out of control. As her destructive fury escalates, Akari assigns Asahi and the gang the daunting task of recreating the cake to save the planet. Izawa's external unit alerts her to the impending doom, a massive asteroid hurtling towards Earth at an astonishing speed. Akane's rage reaches a critical point. The group embarks on creating the ultimate chocolate cake. Izawa produces what she deems perfect truffles, but they're not enough to save the world. Shishido offers an awful-looking chocolate banana, which Akari forces on Akane. Next is Yako's creation, infused with a spicy smell from curry spices. Akari again compels Akane to endure it. As the asteroid's impact looms, Mikan arrives, ominously offering assistance. With the countdown ticking, they're left with two hours and 40 minutes before the asteroid's impact. Humanity braces for potential catastrophe, but miraculously, the asteroid veers away from Earth. A bittersweet ending for Akane, as the dream chocolate she craved goes unfulfilled. Summer arrives and time flies, since Asahi discovered Yako's secret in the spring. However, he still hasn't confessed his love to her. Asahi musters the courage to invite Yako to the pool despite her lack of swimming skills, they decide to practice together. Yako extends the invitation to Aizawa and Shishido, who agree to join. Sakurada, Oka, and Shimada also come along. Shishido and Aizawa take on the role of swim instructors, but Shishido's teaching abilities aren't the best. Eventually, Aizawa takes over the lessons and starts by helping Yako get accustomed to the water, starting with her feet. 
Overcoming her initial hesitation, Yako gradually becomes more comfortable. Unexpectedly, Mikan arrives at the pool, surprised to see her schoolmates there. Mikan reveals to Oka, Sakurada, and Aizawa that Astahi typically takes an interest in girls who possess qualities he lacks. However, this time it appears that he genuinely loves Yako. As they leave together, Yako tells Asahi that she has something important to say and asks him to meet her at school later that night. She expresses her wish to go on a secret swimming training session and leads him to a pool hidden through a secret entrance, a place her mom had told her about. Yako confides in Asahi that she want to learn swimming properly so she could properly thank Izawa for her help. During their training, Asahi asks Yako how she knew about this hidden spot. Yako shared that her parents couldn't swim either, so they used to sneak in and practice. Yako expresses her gratitude to Asahi for being her friend and how his presence has changed her life. Later, Sakurada comes up with an idea to invite Yako and the others to a cake buffet party. Yako hesitates at first, fearing that her fangs might be exposed, but the prospect of eating unlimited cake compels her to agree. As they decide to eat and chat simultaneously, Yako explains that living alone isn't too difficult for her. While eating, she cleverly covers her mouth to avoid revealing her fangs, which felt natural since she was talking while doing so. However, her excitement gets the best of her, and her wings accidentally peek out, causing Asahi to panic. She remains unaware of her wings, prompting Asahi to convey the situation through his phone, urging her to hide them. Mikan then makes a surprise appearance at the cake shop as a waitress and offers cream puffs to Yako. Asahi, knowing their bitterness, decides to eat himself. However, things go south as a result, leaving Shimada and Asahi shocked. The next day at school, Mikan frantically searches for something, her lost glasses. She bumps into Yako and Asahi, sharing the importance of her glasses before she hurries off to retrieve them. Little did they know, Mikan's glasses were possessed by a god. She contemplates revealing this odd secret to them. While on her quest to find her glasses, Mikan crosses paths with Aizawa, who discusses her past article about rejecting Asahi. To Aizawa's shock, Mikan apologizes and explains that she occasionally did so. Aizawa then reveals her true motive to help Mikan find her glasses, enlisting Yako and Asahi's assistance. While searching, Izawa and Mikan encounter the horned girl, Akane, wearing Mikan's glasses. Akane smirks mischievously and takes off running with Izawa and Mikan hot on her heels. As Akane dodges and weaves through the crowd, Akari, her relative, intervenes and teaches her a lesson in her unique style, retrieving Mikan's glasses in the process. Mikan's glasses reveal an unexpected secret, they could talk. The inhabitant introduced herself as the god of fortune to Azawa who, given her own extraterrestrial nature, accepted this revelation with curiosity. The possession of Mikan's glasses stemmed from the care she bestowed upon them, a result of Asahi gifting them to her as a child. Azawa then realized that Mikan also had feelings for Asahi. In a surprising twist, Azawa donned Mikan's glasses and, with the encouragement of the god of fortune within them, confessed her feelings to Asahi, leaving everyone astonished. As the summer festival beckons, Asahi and the group initially plan to attend, but they change their minds at the last minute, intending to give Asahi and Aizawa some alone time. This thoughtful decision stems from Yako's desire to repay their kindness, as she believes that a spark exists between the two. Aizawa suggests they leave since the others aren't present, but Asahi suspects that Yako might be somewhere in the festival, prompting them to venture in that direction. To ease the tension, Asahi attempts to indulge them in the delightful festivity, highlighting the electrifying fun of the occasion. They agree to have fun together, indulging in candid apples, mask-wearing, and various games. Azawa's flawless aim during a shooting game shocks the shopkeeper, who informs them that simply knocking down the prize isn't sufficient. In the shadows, Yako and Shishido observe their progress, noting the genuine fun Azawa and Asahi seem to be having. However, Yako's smile appears somewhat melancholic, raising Shishido's concern. As Yako and Shishido encounter Mikan and her younger brother, Yako loses sight of Izawa and Asahi, prompting them to join forces in the search. While Izawa is buying ice cream, they spot Yako. As Asahi rushes after Yako, an accidental stumble leads Izawa to fall into his arms. Amidst this awkward yet tender moment, Izawa's feelings for Asahi deepen, while Yako finds herself on the cusp of realization. Back at school, Yako begins avoiding Asahi, prompting him to inquire about her whereabouts. Meanwhile, Yako finds herself in the principal's office, face to face with Akane. She questions Yako's feelings and exposes the stark contradiction between Yako's declaration of support for Asahi and Aizawa, and her visible distress upon witnessing their close moment. Yako retreats into her thoughts, contemplating her emotions for Asahi amidst the confusion and denial. Yako's behavior takes an unexpected turn. She avoids Asahi and even addresses him as Sir. Baffled by her own actions, she confides in Shishido. Who urges her to confront her own feelings. Meanwhile, 
Asai's friends come up with the idea of him walking home with Yako, hoping it might help bridge the gap between them. In the meantime, Ezawa grapples with guilt over the growing distance between Yako and Asahi, believing it's partly her fault. She crosses paths with Akane, who offers to fulfill her wishes in exchange for a price. Akane reveals a hidden photograph of the moment Aizawa and Asahi fell, prompting a series of comical events involving Mikan, ice cream, and the photo ending up in Asahi's hands. Amidst this chaos, Yako misinterprets the scene and reconsiders her desire to walk home with Asahi. Later, at home, Yako receives a call from her dad, further adding to her turmoil. The next day at school, Yako meets Asahi on the rooftop in his dream. In this dream, she expresses her gratitude to him and reveals that she must leave school. The following morning, Asahi musters the courage to greet Yako, sensing an important conversation is imminent. She hints at needing to talk to him and asks him to meet her on the rooftop after school. His friends speculate that she might confess her feelings to him, while Oka entertains the idea that Yako could potentially misinterpret Asahi and Izawa's relationship, leading to a decision to end their friendship. Asahi's mind whirls the possibilities, his friends reassuring him that everything will turn out fine. Asahi takes a letter of confession with him to the rooftop, determined to express his feelings to Yako this time. Along the way, he encounters Ezawa, who cryptically warns him that she has no choice but to incapacitate him. Ezawa's unexpected chase, wielding a shovel, sends Asahi into a panic sprint. He wonders why she's chasing him so fiercely. Ezawa blocks his path with a barricade of chairs and desks, leaving Asahi bewildered. He confronts Ezawa about her true intentions and why she's hindering his confession. Although she doesn't provide a straightforward answer, Asahi manages to bypass the obstacle and make his way to the rooftop. On the rooftop, Asahi discovers that Yako isn't there to hear a romantic confession. Instead, he learns that she's been taken away because her secret has been exposed. Determined to bring Yako back, Asahi resolves to reclaim his friend and confront the challenges that lie ahead. Asahi, accompanied by Akari, Azawa, and Shishido, embarks on a mission to find Yako. Izawa describes how she witnessed Yako being taken away by a large bat-like creature. Shishido speculates that it could be a member of Yako's family. Suddenly, they hear Akane's voice from the back seat revealing that her devilish abilities allowed them to reach their destination before nightfall. With a display of her powers, Akane propels the car at incredible speeds and even causes it to float. However, this daring journey ends with the car in ruins, the passengers pleading with Akari due to the destruction of her new vehicle. Nonetheless, they eventually reach the vampire's mansion where Asahi, Azawa, and Shishido prepare to infiltrate the premises. Izawa takes charge, leading them through the mansion walls as the sun sets. The mansion is a strange place and their entry is met with the eerie sound of creaking. Suddenly, a colossal man emerges, shocking Asahi and Izawa. Shishido reveals that this giant figure is none other than Yako's father. The unexpected presence of such a massive creature leaves Izawa trembling. As Asahi and Izawa explain their purpose, the gigantic man inquires about his daughter's relationship with Asahi while brandishing a blade. Just as tension rises, Yako arrives, questioning their presence. Izawa hurls a garlic-infused ball at Yako's father, allowing them to hastily rescue Yako. However, their escape is halted as Yako demands an explanation. She clarifies that her return home was due to her mother's illness and the need to care for her, leading to a colossal misunderstanding. Asahi discloses his initial assumption about her secret being exposed, unaware that her father is overhearing their conversation. Yako's father intervenes, cautioning her to stay home if her secret had indeed become known. As Asahi and Yako flee, they seek refuge in Yako's room, safe from her father's entry due to the vampire's inability to pass through the barrier around the room. They discuss past misunderstandings, including the incident at the festival. Yako's father closes in, attempting to break through the room's barrier. He makes an attempt to seize Asahi, but suddenly Yako's mother awakens. Her presence terrifies Yako's father, causing him to retreat. Asahi, Azawa and Yako approach her father, seeking his cooperation for a favor. Asahi requests that Yako be allowed to return to school, ensuring that her secret would be safe. Although her father agrees, he imposes a condition, the complete erasure of Asahi's memories. Asahi agrees to his terms and asks Azawa to use her memory-erasing hammer. However, just as she's about to strike, Azawa reveals she can't bring herself to do it. Asahi steps up to the task himself, but Yako intervenes, stopping him since she can't allow him to forget their shared memories. Suddenly, Yako's father collapses, his memories inadvertently erased due to the hammer accidentally hitting him. The unexpected turn of events leaves Yako's father without his memories. With a display of gratitude, Yako's mother invites them to share a meal before they depart. The next day, Akari's car is restored to its former state, thanks to Akane's contribution. 
The emotional journey concludes as they bid their farewells. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing to the channel and stay tuned for more quality uploads.